Hi everyone, so fantastic to be here. Um, when Dan asked me to speak at Real Big Things, I, I thought, well, what would I tell my clients? I'd actually say to them, what are you passionate about? You know, what is it that really gets you up in the morning? And so for those of you uh, who might be one of the 26 million viewers who have seen Simon Sinek's TED Talk on the Golden Circle, um, you'll know that today I'm actually here to talk to you about my why, my personal why, about why I get up every morning, apart from speaking at Real Big Things, um, but why I get up every morning. And that is because I'm legitimately worried and angry about the state of marketing today. Um, I'm going to take you back to where it all began and explain a little bit more about why I'm so angry and frustrated with where marketing's at today. Um, you'll see here a great image of um, Elle McPherson. I subsequently met her 20 years later when last year she came in and she presented the Elle McPherson range to us at Maya, which is really fascinating. And she doesn't look anything like that anymore, by the way. Um, but I started university in Brisbane and it was in the early 90s and I started off doing accounting. I hated accounting. It was not creative, it wasn't fun. There was nothing colourful about it. And so at the time, I was also working in retail and I worked for Brian Rochford, which is uh, the swimsuit that she's wearing there. Don't you just love the flippers, by the way? Um, but Brian Rochford, uh, for those of you that don't know, had a lot of stores. We had about 50 stores around the country. And um, I just had this great passion for like selling. I was like, oh, there's something awesome about, about selling. But I wasn't getting enough hours at Brian Rutchford, so I actually started selling sneakers. And I went and worked at Foot Locker for three years. Um, in my first year, I actually was lucky enough to get the coveted award of uh, Salesperson of the Year. And I sold $176,000 worth of sneakers while I was at university. Um, a lot of them were the Zoom flights. And um, yeah, I, I actually was one of those salespeople as well that I would actually get down on the ground and actually put their shoe on for them. <laughs> and I found that that really helped in delivering the sale. And I feel like I'm now doing that with clients. Um, so I went back to university and I said, hey, I love this whole selling thing. Like, it's just awesome. So what's the next sort of closest major or degree I can do around selling? And they went, I don't know, maybe marketing. So I started off, I changed my major to marketing and I loved it. Marketing 101, best subject in the world. And I feel really lucky that I was able to stumble upon a career that I am absolutely passionate about. I think I always will be, um, it's just part of my DNA. And what I love about marketing is that it's really gritty, it's really subjective and it's never perfect. The complete opposite to accounting. Um, so, after I finished uni, I went and joined Cadbury Treps as a sales rep. And um, this is my company car that I got given. And I thought I had fucking made it. <laughs> like, I was like, oh my God, I got a brand new station wagon. And I was on $31,000 a year base salary, plus some bonuses. And I got, um, I got all the confectionery and soft drink that I wanted to consume. So I just thought this was like fucking heaven, like this is amazing. Um, but after 15 months, I was exhausted. Like it was really exhausting. You're literally transacting like, particularly in soft drinks, which is what I was, what I was doing. Um, you're actually transacting the sale on the spot and you're oftentimes changing the money as well. So 15 months, I was exhausted and um, I applied for a trade marketing manager role in Melbourne, which was head office. But I actually got a brand manager role instead. And I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Like, this is even better than I thought. So I went and uh, managed this brand, which I'm going to show you now. And hopefully you will remember it. It was a really huge, awesome brand. Why? It's 
So that was our first ad. Um, and yep, I was the brand manager for the launch of Dr. Pepper. <laughs> yep. Um, but don't laugh because I had eight fucking million dollars to spend. I was like so excited. I was like, this is amazing. You know, I've just got so much money here. And I had the support of the business and everyone was like really fired up about making that, this, this brand work. And um, it was really getting into the psyche of how we could change behavior. And that brought a lot of, lot of fun things, right? So eight million bucks, I just went nuts. We had a great old time. We made ads, we developed new products. We did all sorts of crazy things. Um, but this continued, and this continued for you know, another decade. And I launched a lot of products, a lot that didn't work. Um, and I did a lot of crazy campaigns. And I took a lot of risks. But I was really supported in those risks. And people really understood, particularly in Capri Schweppes at that time, you know, all the CEOs that were in the business came from marketing. There was this genuine feeling that without good marketing, our business was not going to survive. Um, so for the last two decades, I suppose, I've had the, the fortunate ability to work on a lot of really awesome brands. And, uh, you know, definitely as the time goes on, you get much more business centric in terms of how you do your marketing, right? Um, I worked on some really big brands. I've also worked on some really, really small ones like Passiona and Mr. and Mrs. T, uh, which is a spicy tomato drink, if anyone doesn't know it. And I had all sorts of roles. I was brand manager, category manager, account manager, marketing manager, general manager, strategy manager. And in the last sort of five to 10 years, I've operated more as CMO. Um, more recently being CMO for Maya. But marketing isn't fun anymore, right? And it's safe and it's serious. And, and who feels this? Who feels like marketing? I feel like this. I feel like, you know, from my experience that marketing today, it's so serious. It's so safe. You know, no one's really taking the risks that, that I certainly took back in my early days. Um, it's more about the numbers. And that's fine, but it doesn't need to be soulless. OK, like, do you want to go and spend your time here or do you want to go and make like one of those Dr. Pepper ads? <laughs> but that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that, you know, I'm now on the other side and I'm looking at clients in a different light and I'm saying, God, how are you absolutely going to transform the business of which, by the way, 50 percent of Australians actually believe marketing can transform a business? Um, we're just not proving it. How do, we now, how do we now evolve this discipline so that we don't be soulless and we start really bringing to the boardrooms of Australia some new innovative things that are going to fundamentally make a difference to the P&L, both at a top line and a bottom line? So anyway, agencies would say to me, you know, hey, so challenging, you know, working with the client, there's so much hard work. And I used to be like, nah, we're not that bad, are we? But I was, I was a bitch. I was a bitch a lot of the time. But, um, you know, mostly I'm now on the other side as supplier, slave, expert, agency, whatever you want to call me. And I am asking myself, so why is the client such a bitch? Well, they have more control than ever before, right? The marketer has the budget. I feel like the balance of power is, is very much still fairly in the client space than in the agency space. They really keep you sweating. So let me give you some examples. You know, you, you've, got, you've got those clients who um, you'll speak to, and I was this person, and, you know, they'd say, hey, hey, I really need some help. I've got a presentation tomorrow. I need you to do this, like, urgently, like ASAP. And then you're like, yeah, yeah, okay, no worries. So they run off, they go and do it. And then 30 minutes later, you get the phone call. Actually, um, I've changed my mind. What we actually need is this. And then an hour later, you get a phone call. Hey, actually, don't worry about it. We've changed our mind. Like, we're so going to do something else. Don't worry about it. Hey, but you might be able to help me on something else. Or then you've got the clients that, like, completely screw you down, like in dollars, to the point where you've got no sweat money in there, right? 
and you're thinking to yourself, okay, should I take the job? Should I not take the job? So you take the job and then you realize that you actually made no money on the job because the client was just a nightmare. Um, or the client um, forces you to pitch against six different agencies and then procurement decide to investigate your business like to the nth degree and then they say, you didn't win it because we just didn't feel the chemistry. And this is sort of like what's happening in our industry, right? We're almost like killing ourselves in the process because the success of the agency is also the success of the client and the success of the client is the success of the agency. And guys, we have to start working together. Now, don't get me wrong, there are some really awesome clients out there and I hope to think that, well, I, I hate to think that I wasn't a good client every now and again, but um, you know, I'm working with some amazing clients now and I love them, I love them to bits. But I just feel like that the clients are becoming rarer um, in being good clients and that's bothering me. So why do I think that's the case? Because of fear. And I think fear fundamentally is driving the behaviour of marketers to be a bitch. Um, I was on the Australian Marketing Institute board for two years. I also have started a CMO forum. And I've obviously had 20 years in the industry now working across FMCG services and retail. And I feel like marketers are also really worried about this. I think that there is a genuine fear around our discipline and how we um, and how how we interact with the business. I mean, the reality is, is that only 3% of boards are actually made up of uh, marketers or people with marketing backgrounds. And only the tenure for a CMO is only about 15 months. So, you know, the, the, the amount of churn that's actually happening is quite significant. Part of what's contributing to the fear is this confusion. And as part of the research that we got done with the Australian Marketing Institute, we found that about 70, 75% of you in the room here today um, are overwhelmed. Overwhelmed and confused with, oh my God, there is so much going on. And there is no doubt about it, marketing today is a lot more complicated than it was back when I was launching Dr Pepper. Um, you know, it is, it is a way more complicated discipline. However, having said that, I think that you know, it's a contributing factor, but not the only factor to why we are not performing better um, as, a, as a discipline. And the first one I think that we need to address is job confusion. And I really do feel like that marketers today really don't know what their job is. They don't sit there and think about how am I now going to make an impact to the business? What are the three big things I've got to do to add value to this organisation? to drive the business forward. Instead, what we do is we get on the marketing treadmill, right? We're just going round and round and round. We execute, we're operational, we keep the business going. But we don't really understand how our job impacts the business and be really, really clear on it. Clear on it. And there's different tools that you can use to, to do this, but you need to get the reins on this. I, um, I love the marketoonist and um, Tom Fishburn, he, uh, he has these great cartoons and I think what sums this up for me with job confusion is that, you know, we, we get distracted by things that actually aren't going to make a difference to the business. So, you know, what we need to boost sales is a viral video. So on the count of three, do something funny, guys. He but it's just, it's not actually going to make a difference to the business. And it actually just makes marketing look silly. The second thing I think that um, we need to address is our accountability. And, you know, this, this comes in many forms. Um, you know, there's no doubt about it that there's six times more chance that your CEO has a finance background than a marketing background. So when you start talking to the business about your accountability, you need to be very cognizant of the um, financial implication. I think this is the strategy that marketers are deploying at the moment, which is hope. It's almost like my waterfall planning chart of how I'm actually going to get the number is I'm going to you know, pray to God, I'm gonna have my fingers crossed and I've got general optimism and that's going to get me there. And it's just not good enough, guys. Like, we've got to get our shit together. I mean, even when I was at marketing um, for Maya, 
I, uh, there was 150 on-site marketers in that business and 150 of them, we still hadn't quite worked out, even in the time that I was there, it was really hard to crack how are we going to build an ROI model so that each of the marketers understood how they're actually adding value to the business. We couldn't do it. It was really tough. And I get that it's really tough, but we need to start doing this. And my issue is that agencies aren't getting this. You know, agencies don't really understand the extent of the problem. So that's how I built my business. But, um, but this hope is not a strategy. And yeah, and I feel like we've just got to address this accountability issue. The first, the third fear, <laughs> which I think exists for myself included, is the fear of missing out on cool shit. Um, and I've termed it this because I think what happens with marketers is that we get blindsided by things that we think are important to do because it looks like we're being progressive and we're connecting with consumers in the right way, but it's actually not having an impact on the business. So I'll give you an example. It might be I've gone into businesses and have said, hey, you know, I've really just got to launch this new flavour for Coles. Like, if I don't do that, like, oh, my God. Or, um, hey, I've really got to do a Facebook page because if I don't, I'm not going to look like I'm keeping up. Or I've really got to, like, go and look into 3D printing or I've got to go and do, like, before that viral ad. And it's actually not what's intrinsically going to matter, yeah, and what's going to make a really big difference. Um, the marketoonist has, uh, has this one. It's, if millennials haven't engaged with our brand so far on social media, what makes you think they will on Tinder? You know, everyone's talking about Tinder. It's like, is Tinder really going to improve your brand? I mean, really? But I think it's, um, I think it's a good example. So... Fear is paralyzing. And what I'm asking you all to be is fearless. I want you to be comfortable with the uncomfortable. I want you to start taking risks. I want you to start thinking about how you can drive performance for the business. Marketing has so much impact on the business. I mean, it's involved in everything, right? It goes the whole way through end to end. You've just got to find ways in which you can unleash and harness that potential to really operate as an effective force in the business to transform it and grow it in both revenue and profit. And I'm going to ask you, you know, like, why did you join this industry in the first place? You know, even if you are on the agency side or the client side, whatever side you're on, why did you join? You joined, you joined this industry so you can make a difference. And mine is that... I fundamentally believe that marketing is a, is a critical lever to business success. I do not believe businesses can survive the eternity of time without great marketing. And if we don't believe that, then how the fuck is anyone else going to believe it? How are boards going to believe it? How are, how are, how are businesses going to believe that marketing can make a difference if we don't believe it? So we've got to know it. We've got to know how we're going to make a difference. I'm encouraging you to make sure that you have the confidence to take risks and you get backed by really strong leaders. And if you don't have that in your business, then it's a real worry. We need strong marketing leadership and strong marketing direction to carry us through to make sure that we have a seat at the table. So if you are a client, all I can say is, please don't be a bitch. Work with your agency and do great stuff. Thank you.